Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm going to be freaking out and checking in with the books I have read so far this year. So I think when I ran the poll on Twitter, the uh, option that actually won was to do the tags separately, but it's already the end of July, and I feel like I just need to hurry up and do these tags before I am completely late. So I am going to answer all the questions from both tags, but I'm not going to do any of the repeats. I'm going to do the mid-year book freakout tag first, and that was created by Is That Chammy and Ellie from Earl Grey Books. I will of course link both their original videos down below. Question number one is the best book you've read so far in 2018. If you guys have been on my channel for a little while, you can go ahead and skip to the next question, but um, if you guys are new, hi, welcome, my name is Kara, and I love this book. I have not shut up about it. This is Bloodwater Paint by Joy McCullough, and I have a full review that I will link down below. I really encourage you to check that out, because I really go in-depth on the, the book and why I love it and why it's important. But basically it is about the life of an Italian painter named Artemisia Gentilici, and she was incredibly talented, but for the longest time her gifts were not appreciated, and the only thing she was ever known for, if she was known at all, was her tragic rape by her tutor. And this book is based on the lead-up and the aftermath of that event, and how Artemisia actually takes him to court, and it is such a powerful story, so emotional, definitely a trigger warning for sexual assault, but this is not a bleak book, like, it really is filled with such hope and strength, and the the incredible things that Artemisia was able to do, and the way that she was able to take this terrible thing that happened to her, and use her art to strike back at it, was just so incredible. I highly recommend you guys check this out, even if you're not into historical fiction, even if you don't think this sounds like something you would normally read, I think it's still worth trying. I just feel like this book has really changed me as a person, and I think it can do that for other people too. Question number two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2018. And I'm gonna go with The Spell Coats by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the third book in the Dale Mark Quartet, and I love this. This has been my favorite book of the series so far. In classic Diana Wynne Jones fashion, the plot is amazingly complex, but it still makes sense, like it still works. The magic system and world building are incredible, the characters are just so wonderful, and all of the family relationships I think are written so well, and just this whole series has just been such a wonderful experience, and I'm really excited to get to the fourth book. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I can't believe I still haven't read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I need to get on this. I know I'm going to love it, and I'm really worried I'm going to get spoiled for it the longer I wait, so this has to happen soon. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have a few that I am so, so excited for. The first one is The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth, and that comes out October 23rd. I am just so excited for this book. It's about two sisters who go to a magical world, and then they come back. And one of the sisters wants to move on with her life as if nothing has happened, and the other sister is desperate to get back to this magical world. And the book really follows, I think, their, their like, adjustment period. And I believe one of the sisters goes missing, and... This is just, this is giving me Chronicles of Narnia vibes, it's giving me Every Heart a Doorway vibes. I am just so excited for this book. Another one I'm really anticipating is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This comes out September 11th of this year, and I am just, again, so excited for this. It's about the women in the Trojan War, basically how they do the best they can to survive in this horrible situation. I love Greek mythology, I love feminism, I love taking women from history and giving them a better or more fleshed out story. I am so excited for this. I just, I hope it's going to be amazing. And the last new release I want to mention is The Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rossner, and that comes out September 25th. This, I don't know much about this one, except that it is a fantasy or like fairy tale inspired story that is based around Jewish folklore, which sounds so exciting, so wonderful. That's definitely not something that happens a lot in publishing, so I'm really excited about this one. It looks like it's going to be a really magical, whimsical story that focuses on the life, again, of sisters, and I'm really looking forward to it. Question number five is Biggest Disappointment, and unfortunately I have a few of these. Most recently it was The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. Read that for our group book for Retelethon, and I did not enjoy it at all. I loved Louise O'Neill's Asking For It. I thought that was a brilliant book, and this one just fell flat in every way. It promised to be a feminist Little Mermaid retelling, and which sounded amazing, and it just was not good. Also gonna mention the Grisha trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. I just... there were some things I liked about it, but given the fact that everyone raves and raves about that series and about Leigh Bardugo so much, I was hoping for more. I have a full review and discussion on it, and I also have to mention The Hollow Kingdom by Claire B. Dunkel, because that was one of the first rant, I think, videos I did on this channel. I thought it was going to be a really great kind of fae or folklore-inspired story with some hate-to-love romance elements and possibly some Beauty and the Beast vibes, and it was one of the most problematic and upsetting things I have read in recent memory, so I will also link that video down below if you feel like hearing me rant some more. 
Question number six is Biggest Surprise. And that has to be Marisi by Maria Tarchaninoff. I had an arc of this book. This is the finished copy that I bought immediately after finishing it. And it had been sitting on my shelves. I had almost unhauled it a couple times because I kept thinking I had lost interest in it. And I finally picked it up for the one readathon to rule them all. And oh my god, I loved it. I gave it five stars. I immediately ordered the second book in the series, which I also loved, and I am so ready for the third one to come out. This is just such a fantastic feminist fantasy series. This is such an underhyped series, and I really, really recommend it. I will link the wrap-ups where I talk about the first and the second books down below, because I really go in-depth on the plot, but wonderful characters, wonderful writing, and world, and plot, and commentary, and just everything. Question number seven is favorite new author, debut or new to you. So as far as the authors that I've only read one book from them but I love them, that's, you know, Madeline Miller who wrote Circe, there's of course Joy McCullough who wrote Bloodwater Paint, and then an author who I've actually read two books from and I'm really excited to check out the rest of her titles, that's Robin McKinley. She wrote Sunshine and Beauty, both of which I read this year. She wrote a ton of other books as well and I just really love her writing style and the kind of stories she tells, so I'm really excited to check out more books from her. But the most recent one I read that just completely blew me away and has got me so excited to check out this author's other works is Anne Ursu, who wrote The Real Boy, which I just read, and Breadcrumbs, and a couple of other books, and I just love her magical, like, beautiful writing style that doesn't go over the top, and the kind of story she tells, and the way she writes her characters, and the way that you just, you feel them, like, right in your heart, like, so so immediately after starting this book. I'm, I just loved everything about this book. And she was a recommendation from Misty from Book Rat Misty. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. Almost every single person I've seen do this tag has said like, yeah, I don't really crush on characters, so I don't have an answer for this one. And I just like, I watch that and can't relate. <laughs> like I'm such an emotional reader that I, that happens quite often with me. One of the most recent and strangest, I have to admit, is definitely Micah Bayar from the Seven Realms series by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the third book, The Grey Wolf Throne. I still have to read the fourth book, so maybe this will completely change, but I, I don't like Micah, but I do. Like he's, he's kind of the antagonist or one of the antagonists of the story, but every time I think I've made up my mind about like what kind of character he is. He does something that just completely like changes my mind or makes me rethink things and it's just like, you know, sometimes there's a villain where you don't like him but you like him and that's Micah for me. Question number nine is newest favorite character and that goes to Cersei from the book of the same name by Madeline Miller. I love Cersei so much. She's so important to me. Like, she, she is so strong and intelligent and she goes through so much over the course of this book and the way she handles situations like she's always learning and she's always changing but she always feels like true to the core of her character. I don't know if I'm explaining that well at all but this is another one you will hear more about in my wrap-up but I love Cersei so much. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry and as I mentioned earlier I'm a very emotional reader. I connect very deeply to books that I love so if I'm enjoying a book or if a book is affecting me in any way I probably will cry or at least tear up. So the problem for this one was kind of narrowing it down. But I'm going to go with the book that surprised me that it made me cry. And that is Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. So this book, very popular on booktube and elsewhere. I actually find it, I actually find the hype completely justified, which is always exciting. And this is a book about a girl who starts a feminist revolution at her Texas high school because she is sick and tired of the way girls are treated. And it's wonderful. When I talked about this book, I mentioned that Something about the writing was a little bit distancing and I didn't think the romance was necessary But even with that I gave this book five stars because everything else about it was so well done The story and the female friendships and the journey of the main character and how she She how she begins to notice that things are wrong and that she decides to change them is just so wonderful and the end of this book made me cry because I'm just like so proud of these girls and I'm so proud of the girls in the real world who are doing things like this. If you've read the book you probably know the scene at the end I'm talking about but it just this book is so important to me. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. I chose The Thieves of Ostia by Caroline Lawrence. This is the first book in the Roman Mystery series which is one of Manal's favorite book series of all time from Manal and her books. Something that I found so exciting about this book is that it's a series that a lot of people remember from when they were kids. I never read this as a kid but I still somehow tapped into this feeling of nostalgia or comfort for this book that I had never read before because it reminded me of certain other reading experiences I had when I was younger and of my love for historical fiction and even setting aside all of the like comforting factors and like nostalgia and all of that. Reading this as an adult for the first time, this was still a fantastic book. I'm definitely going to continue the series. I just, I love the fact that these kids were solving mysteries and 
just being so clever and smart in believable ways because that's always kind of frustrating when authors write children either as complete idiots who can't do anything or as miniature adults who are just doing things that don't make any sense these characters were perfectly in the middle and I just I really love this book. Question number 12 is favorite book to film adaptation that you saw this year? And that has to be both film versions of My Cousin Rachel. The new one I think came out near the end of last year but I just watched it this year and I also watched the original one with Olivia de Havilland and Richard Burton and even though I think I slightly prefer the original movie I was really really impressed with the new version as well and with how well it captured the tone and the feeling of the novel. And the new one is with Rachel Weisz and Sam Claflin. I just really enjoyed both of those films and I also want to take this opportunity to highly recommend the novel by Daphne du Maurier. I think I actually enjoyed it a little more than Rebecca and I really liked Rebecca so definitely a master of psychological thrillers and suspense and just the creepy atmosphere of this book is just really fantastic. Question number 13 is favorite review you've written this year? The booktuber version of this is the favorite video you've made this year. I would probably say the one I did for Bloodwater Paint because I talked about a couple of the paintings and I don't know I'm just I'm just proud of how I structured that video and especially because it was a book that was so important to me. For another video I would say my original Shakespeare book tag that I did which I will also link down below. It was my first original tag and it's for a playwright that is again very important to me and I don't know, I just, I'm really proud of the questions and of, and it's been so fun seeing other people do that tag. Question number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. Now in my last two book hauls, I think there were quite a few beautiful books. I will again link those down below in case you haven't seen them yet, but I wanted to show you guys one that you haven't actually seen, and that is this beautiful illustrated collector's edition of The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So I actually saw this book for the first time in one of Priscilla's videos from Bookie Charm, and I hadn't like intended to buy it or anything but I was at half price books later and I happened to see this for like a few dollars and it was in like perfect condition the plastic wrap was still on it and it's got these gilt edges and the illustrations are just beautiful they're by Charles Robinson and I just love this style it looks very like Arthur Rackham to me and I just I love this novel it's one of my favorite books of all time definitely one of my favorite classics of all time and now I have a really beautiful edition that I don't have to worry about falling apart when I read it, like my old one. And the last question on this tag is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, a lot of them. <laughs> I did do a specific series I want to finish, TBR, but not doing so well with that. I've kind of discovered recently that I don't do so well with long-term TBRs because I get tired of them a lot quicker. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it simple and just say the anticipated releases that I mentioned and, of course, Children of Blood and Bone and whatever else I decide to read. Possibly some of the series I wanted to finish, but no guarantees. <laughs> now moving on to the questions in the mid-year book freakout tag that were not already covered in the other one. This tag was originally created by Dane Reeds and Harriet Rosie. Again, I will link both of their originals down below. The first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? And I am filming this on July 26th. I know it's really late for these mid-year check-in tags, but this was the first opportunity I really got to do this. And as of this filming, I have read 77 books, which I am very, very happy with. Skipping down to question number four is, what genre have you read most this year? And that is definitely fantasy. 27 of the books I have read so far have been fantasy books, and I actually separate my fantasy books I've read from fairy tale retellings, or retellings of any kind, so that number could be even higher. Down to question number seven, which is, what are your favorite and most anticipated releases of 2018? I've already mentioned some of my most anticipated releases, and of course I mentioned Bloodwater Paint, which was a 2018 debut. I've also referred to Circe by Madeline Miller, which is another 2018 debut that I absolutely loved. But I also want to give a shout out slash reminder about Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman. This is a book set in the world of Serafina. I think everything about this book is just so brilliantly constructed, like the world building is gorgeous and it feels so real and the main character of Tess is just fantastic. Her growth and her strength in in various ways is just such an important and wonderful development and just everything about this book makes me super emotional. There are scenes that I still think about that just like took my breath away. I remember a specific point in this book where I decided to stop reading and go to bed because of the like the feeling of wonder and comfort and just beauty from a particular scene I just remember thinking like I want to go to bed with that in my head so I actually stopped reading this book because of how good it was which is an unusual recommendation but I think it's a high one. Question number eight is what's your next big priority for your reading? So I mentioned that series TBR which may or may not happen so that's kind of on my list but mainly I just want to 
kind of ease up on planning my reading because as I mentioned earlier I do really well with short-term TBRs like books that I know I'm already excited for or that I will be excited for in the next couple of weeks but year-long or kind of long-term ones not so much so I sort of want to embrace that and not stress myself out about deciding books I just have to get read by the end of the year. That is such a cop-out answer, but that's what I'm feeling in the moment. Question number nine is what's been your bookish highlight of the year so far? One of them is the buddy reads that I have done so far and that I plan to continue. I buddy read The Three Musketeers with Trisha from Tell Her a Story. I buddy read a couple of books with Giselle Bradley and that was really fun. I buddy read To Kill a Kingdom with Amy from Blonde and Bookish. We will link the review and discussion that I did and the one that she did as well. And I'm currently buddy reading War Cross with Olivia from Read by Liv and just buddy reading has been such a fun experience. I know a lot of people have said that, but it really is so exciting to be able to talk and share feelings and gush or complain about whatever you're reading with a booktube friend. And I also want to mention Retelathon, which I co-hosted with a bunch of other lovely people. Michaela from My Book Self, Spencer from Common Spence, Olivia from Read by Liv, Leah from Leah Bex. Just all of us had such a wonderful time hosting that and like working on it together and getting to know each other better, and it's just been really a wonderful, wonderful experience, and it was so great to see everybody join in and to read books that are retellings, which is one of my favorite subgenres. Finally, number 10 is Who Do You Tag? And it's the end of July. I'm probably one of the last people to do this tag, if not the last one, so I'm not going to tag anyone in particular. If you guys haven't done it yet and you would like to, definitely do it. Say I tagged you. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you stuck through to the end of this video. Hopefully it wasn't as long as I'm afraid it's going to be. I will see you guys soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!